Today I'm going to talk to you about the most important thing in travel, sustainability. While there are companies who claim to be sustainable in order to get good PR, and greenwashing happens far more than we care to admit, the reality is that sustainability is quite literally a matter of life and death. As highlighted by a guru, David Attenborough and many others, if we continue to act in the way that we have been, our planet simply will not survive. And on a smaller scale, with a shorter time frame, if we continue to holiday in the way that we have been, then tourism will not survive. Sustainable tourism is not a choice. We have no choice. It must happen. And in this video today, I'm going to tell you what that means for the people who work in travel, for the travel and tourism businesses, and for us, the tourists. Tourism is one of the world's fastest growing and most important industries and is a major source of income for many countries. However, like other forms of development, tourism can also cause its fair share of problems. Sustainable tourism therefore relies on the premise of taking care of the environment, the society and the economy. Sustainable tourism principles intend to maximise the positive impacts whilst minimising the negative impacts. However, this is often easier said than done. A large majority of travellers, 87%, say that they want to travel more sustainably. And this was found in a survey that was done by Booking.com. However, this was done back in 2018, so I expect that this number, with the heightened awareness of sustainability resulting from COVID, etc., I expect that this number will be somewhat higher now. But what does being sustainable actually mean? What does sustainability really look like? One of the earliest and most regarded definitions of sustainable tourism was published in the Brundtland Report, where it was defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This sums it up pretty well to me. Think about it. If we carry on to act the way that we have been, the opportunities that we have will not be there for our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Is that what we want? For example, if litter is dropped on the beach and it's not cleared up, then future tourists will not want to go to that beach. And if economic leakage is not controlled, i.e. when the money spent by tourists leaves the country as a result of foreign-owned businesses, imported produce, etc., then the local people will see little or no benefits of tourism. They may become unwilling to work in the sector or even become antagonised by it. You see where I'm going with this, right? Another key definition of sustainable tourism is that of the United Nations World Tourism Organisation, who state that sustainable tourism is tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social and environmental impacts addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment and the host communities. Whilst many people believe that sustainability is all about protecting the environment, they are actually only partly right. In fact, there are three pillars to sustainability and to sustainable tourism. And I've mentioned these terms a couple of times already. It's the environment, the economy and society. And we must mitigate or at the very least minimise any negative impacts in these three areas in order to make travel and tourism sustainable. The United Nations World Tourism Organisation proclaimed that sustainable tourism should make optimal use of environmental resources that constitute a key element in tourism development, maintaining essential ecological processes and helping to conserve natural heritage and biodiversity respect the social cultural authenticity of host communities, conserve their built and living cultural heritage and traditional values, and contribute to intercultural understanding and tolerance. Ensure viable, long-term economic operations, providing socio-economic benefits to all stakeholders that are fairly distributed, including stable employment and income earning opportunities, and social services to host communities and contributing to poverty alleviation. Furthermore, the Worldwide Fund for Nature WWF, and Tourism Concern outline 10 principles for sustainable tourism. These are 
using resources sustainably. The conservation and sustainable use of resources, that includes natural, social and cultural, is crucial and makes long-term business sense. Reducing overconsumption and waste. Reduction of overconsumption and waste avoids the costs of restoring long-term environmental damage and contributes to the quality of tourism. Maintaining biodiversity. Maintaining and promoting natural, social and cultural diversity is essential for long-term sustainable tourism and creates a resilient base for the industry. Integrating tourism into planning. Tourism development, which is integrated into a national and local strategic planning framework and which undertake environmental impact assessments, increases the long-term viability of tourism. Supporting local economies. Tourism that supports a wide range of local economic activities and which takes environmental costs and values into account, both protects these economies and avoids environmental damage. Involving local communities. The full involvement of local communities in the tourism sector not only benefits them and the environment in general, but it also improves the quality of the tourism experience. Consulting stakeholders and the public. Consulting between the tourism industry and local communities, organisations and institutions is essential if they are to work alongside each other and resolve potential conflicts of interest. Training staff. Staff training which integrates sustainable tourism into working practices along with the recruitment of personnel at all levels improves the quality of the tourism product. Marketing tourism responsibly. Marketing that provides tourists with the full and responsible information increases respect for the natural, social and cultural environments of destination areas and it enhances customer satisfaction. Undertaking research. Ongoing research and monitoring by the industry using effective data collection and analysis are essential to help solve problems and to bring benefits to destinations, the industry and consumers. So why is this all so important then? As I highlighted to you at the beginning of this video, sustainable tourism is vitally important. If we want future generations to enjoy the opportunities that we've had to enjoy, then we need to act sustainably. It's as simple as that. With the human population continue to grow rapidly, and therefore by default the tourism industry too, we must pay careful attention to the principles of sustainable tourism. Yes, littering is never a good thing. But when the number of people doing it is multiplied, the problem is also multiplied. With population growth, any negative impacts caused as a result of tourism will also grow, thus indicating an urgent need for these to be carefully managed and mitigated through sustainable tourism practices. But whose job is this? Who is responsible for making sure that sustainable tourism actually happens? Ultimately, we are all responsible. The governments need to have adequate planning and tourism development strategies. Tourism businesses need to take responsibility for their actions and think beyond the tourism dollars that they will make tomorrow or next week, adopting strategic, long-term planning instead. Tourism industry workers need to be educated on the importance of sustainable tourism and practices that they can adopt in their own lines of work. And tourists need to think carefully about the impacts of their actions. We all have a responsibility to make sure that sustainable tourism happens and there are lots of different ways that we can do this and I have talked at length about that in these videos here so head on over to watch those next and don't forget to be a sustainable tourist